<laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Chris Cooney, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Chamber's 105th Annual Meeting. First, let me thank you. Let me thank you for making the extra effort to find this place, this little place, the city of Brockton. Although many of us may have heard of Team Challenge, most of us likely did not know their location or that they ran a food and catering service. Would you be surprised to learn, like I was, that Team Challenge has been located right here in this spot on Main Street in Brockton for more than 50 years? With the recent closure of both the Massasoit Conference Center and the Shaw Center, the Chamber is delighted to have found a facility in Brockton that could fit our more than 400 attendees and dozens of exhibitors. We are equally pleased to highlight Team Challenge and the more than two and a half million dollars in renovations they have made in this facility in Brockton. This investment is key to solidifying their role at the forefront of guiding people back from addiction and into a more healthy and sustainable life. Many of them are our employers. We've got kids, we've got neighbors, and we've got cousins. Working in facility management, conference planning, and food services is a pathway for many people back on to get on their feet. So again, I thank you for being here today as we celebrate another year of the Chamber and our members making an investment and a difference in the Metro South region. As you may refer to in your program, this location in Brockton also allows us to feature the recent investment that Booster Ambulance has made with the purchase and transformation of the former Copeland Chevrolet. You know, Todd Copeland's here. Uh, shout out to Todd. And he bought that dealership and uh, relocated it and has expanded it dramatically, making it the largest Chevy dealer uh, in New England. Some of you may have uh, even parked there today. It's a little bit of a jaunt, but we're glad uh, you took the buses and where we live here. We also want to acknowledge Brockton Area Transit Authority's maintenance facility and their leadership. It's right nearby, it's right across the street. And uh, the fleet of new and hybrid bat buses are being highlighted today. Mm -hmm. Ray Ledoux and his team have consistently been recognized by both state and federal transit authorities for running a quality and efficient operation uh, throughout this entire region, including over $10 million in new buses uh, in the last few years. We are happy to have also so many more people, businesses, and organizations represented here today. Many of them have displays throughout the room. You can do us a favor. I take a moment before you leave today just to visit with them and see uh, what they do and the services they offer and the contributions that they make to this, this community. We are at full capacity. There are still people coming in. I know the buses are running continually. So I ask you if you have an extra chair, if you mention to me that you might have an extra chair, just raise your hand and uh, invite somebody over, meet somebody new. I know uh, we have some over at National Grid, we have a couple at uh, uh, Eastern Bank, and so on. At this time, I would ask you to rise, take your gift bag, place it under your, your chair. Just so the servants have room to bring the food over. Okay? And as we rise, as we salute our nation's flag, and now to sing the national anthem to lead us in that is the Cardinal Spellman High School Cabaret a cappella group led by Mr. Stephen Burton. Stripes and bright stars. 
this time, please join me in a moment of silence as we honor our servicemen and women for their dedication and enduring service to our country. Also, I'd like to share a moment of silence for all those involved in this Team Challenge facility and the love and support that they provide to so many. Please, a moment of silence. Thank you very much. <coughs> Please uh, enjoy your salads and your meal as we continue on with the program. This is designed to allow you to continue to eat uh, as we go through some of the program here today. I would like to uh, thank our larger sponsors for today's event. Uh, we cannot do these events without our sponsors. So I want to recognize at this time our mere sponsor it is Crescent Credit Union, who is kicking off their 100th year as a credit union, serving the people of Brockton and far beyond. Uh, with us today is the President and CEO, Bob Gustafson, and uh, as well as uh, VP of Marketing, John Wayne, and Richard Hook, who is the Commercial uh, Services Manager. I would like uh, Bob Gustafson to come up onto the stage. At this time, I also invite Mayor Bill Carpenter and State Representative Mike Cronin and Jerry Cassidy, who are here. Present an official key of the city on behalf of the city and the state, the Crescent Credit Union, and see you have all us in the celebration of your centennial. Well, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to uh, join Chris in welcoming everyone here to Team Challenge. Uh, I first want to say how much uh, to the chamber, how much I personally appreciate the great effort they made to keep this event uh, here in the city of Brockton. We are challenged temporarily with uh, large scale function facilities, uh, but the fact that the chamber was uh, willing to partner with Team Challenge and uh, host the event here means a great deal to the city and I think it shows uh, the Chamber's ongoing commitment to the City of Brockton. So, Chris, thank you for, very much for that. Um, I think that it's great being here at Team Challenge, and you may think it's a little bit of an unusual venue for a business organization uh, to be hosting an event at Team Challenge, but quite the opposite is actually the truth. If there's a major issue facing employers right now in this Commonwealth, it's the impact of substance abuse disorders on their productivity, their companies, their employees, and their employees' families. And ironically, Friday morning, I'm participating in a, a forum with the Massachusetts Taxpayers Foundation in, in Austin, specifically talking about the commitment and the role that employers have to get engaged in make because it is affecting your bottom line and it's going to continue to impact your bottom line uh, even further. They released their report last night and they estimate uh, the impact on Massachusetts employers is about $2.3 billion a year of this crisis. So this is a very appropriate uh, place for us to be uh, meeting here today. And of course, uh, most importantly, I want to uh, congratulate President Credit Union, President Bob Gustafson, CEO, and his entire team. A hundred years of service uh, to the community. The President Credit Union uh, has continued to invest and reinvest in the city of Brockton, provide jobs uh, to people for the city of Brockton, and uh, it's a great honor to congratulate you, Bob, on your 100th anniversary. Thank you very much. I know uh, Eric Heller and John Murray uh, were interested in his John. Round of applause for uh, the UMass Dunning Institute. In addition, we have some elected officials here today. I just want to uh, read out their names and probably a round of applause to the end. We have uh, State Representative Clay Carter, who knows on their way in. 
Uh, we have City Council with Ann Beauregard. We have Mark Lee with Southeast Association Technical High School. We have Dottie Funconetti, Eastern Select Person. Connor Reed, Eastern Town Manager. Dan Salucci from the Town of Whippin, Select Person. We have uh, State Representative Jerry Cassidy and also City Councilor Shirley Asap. Let's have a round of applause for them. So we're going to submit our past chairs to the board, our directors, affiliates, and economic development partners who are here today and uh, being supportive. We appreciate the support from the leaders. I uh, did want to just call your attention. There is a raffle going on from the Chinese Education Foundation. That's a 501 c 3 organization. It's a charity educational entity. If you haven't bought tickets uh, already, you should be welcome to. There are ambassadors going on. Uh, Again, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Metro Chamber of Commerce Annual Meeting. We thank you for coming today in support of the Chamber and the entire region. Uh, the Chamber is very fortunate to have a very positive leadership of Jerry Nadeau uh, as our Chair of the Chamber. Not going to be the Chair. We are here with the Chief in the last two years of our We were just talking with a reporter today that uh, Jerry grew up not far from here and was a local guy who uh, knows the city very, very well and knows the business community very, very well and has uh, risen, risen up uh, through the uh, levels of management at uh, Rock and Trust and is now basically the name the CEO of uh, Rock and Trust. So please uh, join me in a round of applause for our MC today. vitality and quality of life in the Metro South region. The past year we have hosted dozens of programs including business after hours, legislative events, a taste of Metro South, and the third annual multicultural business forum. We are a convener connecting people with each other for the benefit of their businesses and the Metro South region. The Chamber within the past year conducted two commission studies and commenced a third. All three studies focused on properties of regional importance and reflected statewide economic development priorities, regional water supply, expansion of life sciences, and construction of new senior supportive housing developments rounded out the focus of these studies. The first two studies resulted in providing critically important data and information to help guide public policy for private land development. The third study is designed to advance implementation a plan to build up the former Cristo site on the city's east side. The Chamber, through these activities, is committed to providing helpful and timely information as we aim to help chart a course toward the highest and best use of these valuable properties. It is also nice to report the Chamber is being selected by the State of Massachusetts as a regional economic development organization again this year. This designation provides a role for the Chamber in support of state economic development priorities. As a result, the Chamber is better focused in convening regional stakeholders, coordinating consultation, commissioning research, and advancing advocacy on issues of importance to the businesses in the communities. In looking forward, the Chamber is committed to continuing its stewardship support of the Brockton Partnership. <coughs> These monthly gatherings are now in their third year and brought together prominent business leaders of large size organizations. The meeting site moves each month throughout Brockton and the agenda covers a wide range of economic development issues and priorities facing the city. The partnership reviews and influences the more than a dozen major Brockton construction projects currently in the permit stage as they move closer to the ground. All are advancing within the next six months. An example of these projects include the downtown parking garage, the Naval Works building on Main Street, mixed use buildings on Commercial Street, the new apartments on West Elm Street, and the Ganley Building at the end of Belmont Street, just to name a few. In January, the Chamber also sought the advancement of four of its professional staff, which positions at employers located in serving the greater Metro South region in areas of research, defense, education, and healthcare. The Chamber has become an organization that develops its staff and prioritizes their advancement, not always to the betterment of the Chamber on a short-term basis, but always in the long term. 
Although most years this does not usually happen at the same time as it did this year. With this change, we have the opportunity to welcome several new staff and more returning. Please find a moment today to say hello to Emma Stratton in communications, Amanda Alfani in events and programs, and Kayla May in membership services. Also say welcome back to Ann Baresi as accountant for the change. Applause maybe for the staff. Finishing the fiscal year with a healthy balance sheet and ample reserves to address unexpected expenses. The Chamber is in the strongest position of its 105 year history. Kudos to all of you here today and the dedicated board of directors for this success. Once again, thank you for your support as a gauge in the business community. We will not achieve as a region what we have without each of you and your contributions. Now, we move on to the nominating committee. At this time, I'm pleased to present the report of the nominating committee for 2018. The slate was officially elected at the October Board of Directors meeting. I ask those present to stand as I call your name and remain standing until all are introduced. And I'd ask again to hold your applause to be completed. Nominated and elected to the class of 2019, Todd Copeland of Copeland Auto. Jones of Harvard Healthcare. Jenny Mather of J.M. Pet Resort. Peter Balacco of Brophy and Phillips. Lisa Stratton of the Enterprise and Wicked Mobile. Rick Fisher of Wicked Mobile Saving Bank. Tina Clickman of Massasoit Community College. Nominated and elected to the class of 2020. Dan Evans of Evans Machine. Masa Kambabi of Masa Kambabi Immigration Law. Joe Carter of the National Grid. Matthew Osborne of Eastern Bank. And Michelle Sweet Brown of Verizon. Nominated and elected to the class of 2021. Paul A. Haney of Bank of America, Albert Sinesi of Vicky Human Services, Kathleen Smith of Rockton Public Schools, and George Spilios of Crown Limited. I would also like to ask that all additional Metro South Chamber board members in attendance to please rise at this time and join me around the applause for the here today. Chairman, Fred Klein. President and CEO, Chris Cooney. Chair elect, Joe Casey. Treasurer, Ray Hott. <coughs> Vice Chair Economic Development, Pat Cherubella. Vice Chair of Membership Development, Fred Weiler. Vice Chair of Community Affairs, Masa Kambaba. Vice Chair of Government Affairs, Ray Ledoux. And past Chairman, myself, Jerry Nato. I want to give a round of applause. Special part of our annual meeting is the presentation of recognition awards. I ask President Chris Cooney to join me presenting these awards. So our first presentation on the board members who are completing their maximum years of service on the board. Please join me on the stage when the name is called. First, Jim Murphy, CEO of Tracy Environmental. And Peter Del Russo, President of Bridgewater Savings Bank. Our next presentation honors those who earned the 2018 Metro South Economic Impact Award. 
Today we honor 10 companies who have made a significant economic impact in the region, creating jobs, adding to the rich business culture, providing valuable products to the communities we serve, and the resources to the region as we grow. Combined, these businesses have invested tens of millions of dollars and added hundreds of jobs. Each award recipient, each award recipient and their accomplishments are detailed in your program. I ask each recipient as I call your name to come forward and remain on the stage for a photo. The Metro South Chamber of Commerce is pleased to present the Economic Impact Award to the first five recipients. And they are as follows, accepting on each of their behalf. Alternative Compassion Services, ACS, Stephen Werther. Brewster Ambulance, Alexandra Hart. Rockton Area Transit Authority, Ray Ledoux and Tom Schiavone, Deputy Director, Mass DOT. Floor and Decor, Rich Arath, and Russell and Peter Funeral Home, Pat Cherimella. Our final recognition award is the Charles A. Fuller Memorial Chamber Award. The late Mr. Fuller had served as chairman of the board for the chamber and was very dedicated to our organization and the community. This award recognizes an individual whose leadership, performance, personal example, and good influence has done the most to advance the welfare of the Metro South Chamber of Commerce and the community. This year's recipient is Donna O'Connor, SCORE Advisor and retired Regional Liaison for the United States Small Business Administration. Donna began her career with the U.S. government working for HUD in their Boston office. Her first day of work was the day of the blizzard of 78, which struck and paralyzed the region for days. Donna, wanting to start off on the right track, managed to get into work that week to lighten the load of her co-workers. It is this type of dedication that she brought to her nearly 40 years working for the federal government. Up until recently, she had worked for the Small Business Administration, where she had transferred in 1981. In her role with the SBA, she met with thousands of existing and aspiring business people, always offering to listen and provide helpful information regarding the most up-to-date finance and business assistance resources available. As a re regional liaison, I'll get that word right eventually, Donna became a fast friend to many chambers of commerce throughout the eastern part of the state. 
and probably none more so than the Metro South Chamber of Commerce that served the area that she raised her family and calls home in Abington. Donna's dedication to serving the region and the businesses that grow here is commendable and deserves recognition in its own right. What is most impressive is after Donna retired a couple of years ago, she immediately signed up as a volunteer as a SCORE advisor at the Metro South Chamber of Commerce, where she continues to help both SCORE and the chambers better serve the business community. Her commitment and dedication are appreciated. We are pleased to recognize her many contributions as we present her the Charles A. Fuller Memorial Chamber Service Award. Donna O'Connor, congratulations. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for this recognition. I've been with the Chamber for over 20 some odd years when we started a business assistance center here. You know, helping, you know, entrepreneurs start and, and furbish their ideas. Um, I've also taken advantage of many of the trips that the Chamber has offered. We've been to China, we've been to Greece, and it's a great opportunity to work with the many, many lenders, you know, throughout this community. I mean, this Chamber is so supporting of all small businesses and young entrepreneurs, you know, and I thank you again, Chris Chamber, for this, this certificate and award. Thank you. And it is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today, Maria Melagros. Maria is a speaker, an author, storyteller, and empowerment life coach. Whether sharing her life, experiences, and knowledge through impactful talks, workshops, leadership training, life coaching, or videos, Maria uses stories to bring encouragement, education, and love to empower others to get out of their own way and break free from any hindering thoughts or beliefs so they can live amazing lives and leave their unique and positive mark on the world. She knows that no matter where you come from, what you've been through, or what you have done, love, connection, and personal responsibility can change every area of your life. So please welcome me in joining Maria Milagros. Maria? Some of you are going to die before you turn 18. That's your story. 
And then he would go on to teach us and say, this is such a waste of time for me because half of you aren't going to survive, you're not going to make it. This, this is the story that he would tell us. Every single day he would start class like this, over and over and over, reminding us that we were destined to repeat the patterns of our history and the patterns of our parents. And do you know what happens when you hear the same story over and over and over? You start to believe it. And then not only do you believe it, but you start to become it. And then it shapes who you are and it shapes your life. So it wasn't very long before and we ended up moving to Massachusetts. There was a shooting that killed a small boy. And my mom looked at her six kids and said, my kids will live. And she packed us up and moved us to Massachusetts where my grandparents lived. And it wasn't long before I'm here in Massachusetts, but I found myself standing in front of a juvenile detention judge. Because where you are, there you are. I'm in this new environment, and yet I'm the same person because I bought into that story that I was told over and over and over again. Because where you are, there you are. So I ended up having this amazing, this is what I, I wish he would have told us. Learn from your history, but don't live in it. So I ended up um, coming to high school out here, and while I was in high school, I walked into my first class, of my first literature class, and there was this extraordinary literature teacher, and she said, I want everybody to know this first and foremost. No matter where you come from, no matter what you've done, no matter what your parents have done, no matter where you live, you get to change your story. She taught us about the power of the stories that we tell ourselves. She said, in literature, you get to be creative, you get to be imaginative, you get to decide. You do. How you write your story. And then every day, she would start class by telling us this over and over and over. And do you know what happens when you keep hearing the same stories over and over and over? You start to believe it. And then you become it. And it was the first time that an adult said to me, you can change your whole story. You don't have to repeat your past. You don't have to be like your parents. So there I was, this juvenile delinquent, and I'm standing there with this teacher telling me this amazing thing. I had already decided that I was going to do, when I stood in front of the judge, the judge offer was either 40 weeks of anger management and probation or juvenile lockup. And the fact that he even gave me an option was a blessing. So I'm standing in front of this teacher with my 40 weeks of anger management, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to rewrite my story. I'm, when I show up at anger management, I'm actually going to show up at anger management. I'm going to be in those spaces that I want to be in. She taught us this. She gave us this quote, and I love this quote. It's from a Harley Davidson ad from a really long time ago. When you write the story of your life, don't let anyone else hold the pen. I love this quote so much because it reminds me, again, that I got to change my story. And I'm standing here today as proof that I changed my story. And like he said when he introduced me, I believe that anything I'm capable of, so are you, because we're all made of the same stuff. So whatever it is your story is right now, if you're not 100% into your story, you can change your story. And you have the option of writing your story brand new from the top because if you don't take responsibility to change your story your story will not change and for some people it's their relationships and for some people it's business for some people it's how they define success and for some people it's how they define happiness whatever it is you get to decide and you get to write your new story because once you decide that it's true and you believe that it's true you become it and again I'm standing here as proof that it is totally possible. Here's the problem. A lot of people don't even know who they are. They go, uh, Maria, I would love to change my story, but you don't understand. And then they go into all the circumstances and the conditions of their lives because they don't fully understand how amazing and capable they are of taking on every area of their life. So I'm going to give you a little bit of science because I am kind of a nerd. You are one in four, this is the estimated number of people that are on the planet. Seven billion, four hundred and forty-seven million people are on this planet and you are the only one of you that ever has been 
ever is, and ever will be. Let that sink in for a second, because too many people waste too much time trying to be a carbon copy of somebody else. Ladies, Beyonce is taken, let her be. Oh my gosh, how many women are looking at other women and wanting to be like, look like them? The only time that there is an actual flaw in you is when you are comparing yourself to someone else because the truth is you are perfect. Exactly who you are in this moment, right now, is perfect. There's no need to try to be anyone else because you're the only one of you out of over seven billion people that ever has been and ever will be. Here's a little science that made my head hurt. Do you know the chip? Look at all them zeros. What is that? That's not even a real number. <laughs> this is all the same. The chances of you being here in this room right now is one in 400 quadrillion. What is that? I'm just saying. When I, when I saw this data and I read the report, I stood up from my computer and I backed away and I said, that's not even a real number. And I had to count the commas. There are five commas in that number. Do you see how I had to bump to the next row because there's so many? The chance of you being here is nearly impossible. It is one in 400 quadrillion. And let me remind you that you're the only one of you that ever has been and ever will be out of seven billion people. The impact that you are designed to make on this planet, no one else can make. Stop trying to copy other people. I decided a few years ago that when I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna show up. <laughs> so sometimes when people say, I want you to come and give a talk, I say, are you sure? Because <laughs> I'm gonna show up. Like, I'm not gonna pretend anymore. I did that for so long and it was exhausting. Are you sure? Because I'm a little bit ghetto and a whole lot of classy. Are you sure? And they said, no, no, that's what we need. Okay, I'm coming through because if I can't come through, I'm not showing up because I'm the only one of me. And you're the only one of you. And I want your story to be a story that leaves an impact where other people say the fact that that person showed up gave me permission to show up. And when we show up in our fullness with all of our gifts and all of our wonder and all of our splendor, ah, oh, that's when we leave a legacy that's magic. That's the actual science that is a sperm and an egg. Right? That's a, so I took this from the Business Journal Insider and that's, this explains all the breakdown and how they got to this number. But again, the chance of you being here is nearly impossible and what that means is, you are here on purpose, with a purpose. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I talk to so many business people that say to me, but you don't understand, my job is so mundane and I just sit behind a desk and blah, blah, blah. If you chose that job, then please show up to do that job. And if you want a different job, write a different story. But if you're gonna do that, you're making an impact in some way. It doesn't matter how, what you're doing, you're making an impact in some way. You get to decide what that impact is going to be, but you are here on purpose, with a purpose. Know that. This moment, this moment right here, right now, is the most wonderful moment because every moment is an opportunity for you to start over. Every moment is an opportunity for you to shift your focus or to decide, you know what, I'm gonna change my story and I'm gonna move in this direction instead. This moment is an opportunity for you to say, I'm done listening to my past and I'm gonna start moving into my future. Because the truth of the matter is that those things that happened in your past or that you did, yes, they happen and yes, they are facts, but those facts do not need to be the precursors of your future. You get to decide. I was sitting here and I'm even reading this and I thought, how perfect, the past, or dwell, do not dwell on the past, and it's this new thing I'm going to do. That's a new story. And I know that that wasn't you know, part of it, but I'm reading it, and I'm like, yes, that's a new story that we're talking about there. And we get to decide how we show up to write that story, and when you write that story, do not let anyone else hold the pen. If you spend your life trying to please others, you will spend your life trying to please others. You will live by their criticism and you will die by their rejection. You have to show up in your fullness and in your gifts. 
So I'm asking you to think about how you're going to write your legacy. How are you going to show up day in and day out so that the story and the impact that you leave on this community and on Brockton, who is writing a new story, when I first came here a few weeks ago to talk to Chris, and then I read up on some stuff that's happening here in Brockton, I thought, oh, it's so good, because Brockton's writing a new story. Brockton has decided that they're taking on their fullness, and they're going to change what's happening in this community, and it's because of each and every one of you. And you get to decide, first and foremost, what is my story and my legacy going to be, and then how do I connect that to the greater good? But it has to start here, first and foremost. I. Right here, so we tell that story over and over, we believe it, and then we become it. Okay, I can't just tell you to do that because I've been to many talks where the speakers say, be happy, thank you for that pearl of wisdom. How do I do that, right? So I'm gonna give you three ways that you can do this, and this is a little interactive. So you're gonna have to like hard swallow, you'll be fine. We're gonna get through this together, okay? <coughs> All right, the first one is this. Your words have power. The stories that you tell yourself, like we talked about, are very, very powerful and they determine the course of your life. Now, this is not just about your decisions, this is also about how you are talking about and to yourself. Affirmations are one of the most important things that you can do to remind yourself over and over again of who you are and what you're capable of. Which is why I showed you the reminder that you are one in over seven billion and the chance of you being here is one in over 400 quadrillion fake number. So here's what I want you to do. Everybody's going to stand up. Yep. Yep. Stand up. This will only take a minute. Maybe. All right. Here's what I want. Everybody's going to stand in what's called a power pose position. You separate your legs a little wider than shoulder width. Don't make, don't worry. I'm not going to make you do squats or anything. Hands are on your hips. Hands are on your hips. This is like your superhero pose, right? When you stand in this position, your brain says, oh, we get to take up space. I didn't know I get to be confident. This is true. Serotonin is currently going up and cortisol is going down. You're welcome. All right, you're going to repeat after me. And you're going to say it like you mean it. You're going to repeat after me. I am enough. I am enough. I live in my fullness. I live in my fullness. I am perfect. I am the only one of me. I am the only one of me. Ever has been. Ever has been. Ever will be. Ever will be. I am a believer I in myself. I am a believer in myself. I take up the pen and write my story. I take, I take up the pen and write my story. I am capable and creative. I am capable and creative. I am centered and intelligent. I am centered and intelligent. I am, and intelligent. I am resourceful. I am resourceful. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am attractive. I am attractive. I dream big and I start small. I dream big and I start small. I am patient with myself and the process. I am patient with myself and the process. I forgive myself and others. I forgive myself and others. I operate from a place of love. I operate from a place of love. I am grateful for where I am. I am grateful for where I am. I am grateful for who I am. I am grateful for who I am. I am worthy and deserving. I am worthy and deserving. Like you mean it. Like you mean it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. I am worthy and deserving. I am worthy and deserving. I am worthy of abundance. I am worthy of abundance. I am enough. 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 Nice. Give somebody a high five and sit back down. And what's really great about this 
is that again, it helps you write your story. You are enough right now in this moment. As you evolve, as you grow, as you get wiser, as you get smarter, as you get stronger, you are enough. That needs to be your story right here and right now in order for you to take that power into whatever it is that you're doing in your life and in your business. All right, second, what's good about this? This is where I plug my TED Talk. So I gave a TED Talk, and I'm not gonna give you the whole story, but I will tell you this. I learned something really powerful from this drive with my daughter. Her father decided he wasn't gonna see her for her weekend visit about 10 minutes before the weekend visit. And we went through a series of emotions and then at the end she said, Mom, what's good about this? Uh, what? Here's a six-year-old who I just told her her father's not gonna make it for a visit and her question was, there's something good in this, she said. I just can't think of it, can you help me? And it made me realize I have this written at the top of my office and I put this everywhere I go. It made me realize that there is good in everything. Because in that moment, it wasn't this huge grandiose thing that was good. It was, well, it's Friday and on Fridays you get to sleep in my bed. And she's like, yes, I get to sleep in your bed. We, we try sometimes to make it way bigger than what it needs to be and we have to focus on the smaller things. So this is where we practice um, gratitude and where we celebrate the little moments. In that particular instance, it was Friday nights I get to sleep in mommy's bed and it's movie night and I get popcorn. That was like magic for her, right? And we have a tendency as adults to forget that the magic is in the little moments. So here's what I want you to do because again, this is interactive. Um, I want you to turn to someone at your table and I want you to list five things that you're grateful for. Let me give you an example though because some people make this way more technical than it needs to be. <laughs> it could be love, absolutely. It could be quantum physics, sure. It could be chapstick, right? For me, here's my five. Uh, lip gloss, my daughter, this opportunity, hugs, and Shakira. Hey! <laughs> Because I tell you what, on a drive, Shakira makes any drive shorter and she always puts me in a better mood. Okay, so those are my five for right now in this moment. Again, don't overthink it. Let's not get crazy. I'm on a limited time schedule here. Turn to your neighbor, five things you're grateful for. Go. Let us help you. 
the chance of you being here is one in 400 quadrillion. Stop trying to be a carbon copy of somebody else and start taking responsibility for your story and for the energy that you bring into the spaces of your life. So I said to Chris, what's going on in the bags? And he said wine. And I'm like, ha ha, I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna tie that in. And then I thought, how am I gonna tie that in? But this is how we do it. Lessons from wine that you can use when writing our stories. It gets better with time. Mmm, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay, you get to use all of your senses when you're enjoying a glass of wine. And in your life, you should be enjoying every area of your life with all of your senses. And if you're not, get back in your car and go get what you got. You know, you know where I'm going with that. It forces you to slow down. I'll tell you what, when I sit down with a glass of wine, I put some Sade on, I light a candle, and I just move around my house so slowly because I'm just trying to enjoy my glass of wine. It is important in life and in business that sometimes you slow down. Let that be, those spaces be a part of your story. You breathe it in oh. to take a moment just to take a breath. Do you know that it is scientifically impossible to experience stress and take deep breaths at the same time? You're welcome. <laughs> you write that down somewhere. And when you feel yourself getting stressed out or overwhelmed, I'm a single mother, I know what I'm talking about. When my daughter sees me taking deep breaths, she's like, I'll be back. And she's like, <laughs> she knows, she knows, right? Take a deep breath, yes, slow down. Share it with others. When you decide to write your new story, you have to have a small group of close people that you know and trust and share that story. Say, you know what, this is why when people say, I'm gonna go to the gym, if they have an accountability partner, they're more likely to succeed because we need that accountability. We're not meant to live in silos. So you share that story with someone. When I said to my best friend two years ago, I'm gonna start my own company and I'm gonna start doing motivational talks, She's like, yeah, you are. And there was somebody else that I shared that story with, and they were like, really? Why would you want to do that? Shouldn't you just go to, ah, I'm done talking to you, right? <laughs> Be aware of who you share your story with, but definitely share it with others, because then they hold you accountable. Guaranteed, if I, if I don't follow through on something, my best friend is on my phone going, why didn't you? This was your story. Live in your story. And I'm like, ooh, she holds me accountable. We need those people in our lives. And then lastly is this, be very careful about labels, how expensive something is or the packaging that it comes in. I'll tell you what, my favorite wine is Barefoot. And it's some of the cheapest wine, but it's so delicious in my face, right? So, and some people will say, oh, you wanna buy this really expensive, you know, eat all about it. No, I don't. I tried it and it's not that good to me. I know what I like. So we sometimes get caught up in labels and expensive things and we let those become our priorities over making a positive impact over our families, right? Our priorities become stuff. And that's not living, that's just existing. So you wanna be aware of that as well. And there's nothing wrong with having nice stuff. I will be in a Mercedes, okay? There's nothing wrong with having nice stuff, it's when the nice stuff becomes your priority. Is that the story? Is that the legacy that you want to leave? Well, he had a lot of nice stuff. He wasn't very kind. He wasn't a very good parent or husband, but he had a lot. He had a really nice car. His house was big. Just be aware of whether or not those are your priorities and why. Because that's not where true happiness resides. So when you fill your pages as you write your new story, fill them with affirmations. Fill them with the confidence of who you are and the fact that you're the only one of you that ever has been and ever will be. Fill them with the little things that you're grateful for and the big things that you celebrate. Fill them with your intentions. Fill them with how you bring your juice. Fill them with personal responsibility. And please fill them with fun and love. The world could use a lot more fun and love. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to be silly. I remember at my last job, there was this one woman, she was the CEO of the company, and every time we would go into these meetings, we would have a little powwow in my office before we went into the meeting because she was so exhausting and depleting and nothing was ever good enough. Her turnover for that company is ridiculous. And then after we would leave the meeting, I'm at my desk feeling depleted because
because I've done so much and yet nothing is good enough. And the janitor went by and he said, hey, Mary, how's it going today? And I said, well, you know, Joe, it's, it's all right. And he says, remember, even though it's cloudy outside, the sun is back there. There's always something good to look forward to. And I'm like, Joe, that's so good. <laughs> the CEO of the company couldn't do what the janitor could. And so I decided every time we went into a meeting, I posted up at the door. And as people walk in and I'll say, welcome to your future, high five. And they're like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> That's what, high five. And then I would start the meeting before the CEO would get in there and say, quick, 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 one thing you're grateful for, go. And then everybody around there, okay, ah, uh, and then we do this. And then everybody would be in a better mood. And then she couldn't deplete us because we wouldn't let her. What eventually happened was everybody left because they realized they wanted to write a different story and the fun wasn't in that space. Just be aware. That fun and love is something you can bring into every space, no matter who you are or what position you have. So thank you for telling this new story about Brockton and for choosing to take up the pen and write the story about your life and how your life is going to impact not just this community, but communities and generations to come. So thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this time, for allowing me to be a piece of your story for today. And for just allowing me to come into this whole separate community. You don't know me, and you openly invited me in and welcomed me here, and I appreciate you for that. And I thank you because this moment, this is going in my gratitude log. This moment, this is going to be some fun that I can to now do one more order of business, if I may, and that is to invite to the podium Chair, now Chair, Fred Clark, Bridgewater State University. Fred? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Maria, I also want to thank you for your wonderful speech and as you were going through all those attributes and you know, are you smart enough and handsome enough and kind enough? Everyone at our table said it's exactly like she knows us. <laughs> Thank you so much. I wish every one of my students at Bridgewater could hear that speech as well. But speaking of uh, amazing and fantastic, Jerry, before you go, it's my pleasure to recognize your contribution as the chair of the chamber for the past two years. You've done such a remarkable job. Your record of success at Rockland Trust while also leading the chamber is really a tough act to follow. So well done, my friend. We appreciate all you've done for the chamber. And as a token of our appreciation, I think we have uh, something here for you. We're proud to present you with this beautifully handcrafted chair that has your name emblazoned on it and also the years you've served as chair. And if you would take a seat, my friend, we'll take a quick picture of that. Jerry's saying, that's the first time I got a standing ovation and all I had to do was sit down. So, <laughs> all right, Jerry, thank you so much again for doing such a great job as chair and demonstrating for all of us effective leadership for the benefit of the chamber and our community. Let me just uh, begin by saying how pleased I am to be serving in this remarkable capacity as chair. I grew up in Brockton. I'm a son of Brockton. I literally grew up just a couple of blocks away on the corner of Kalmar Street and Warren Ave. So to be here um, in this capacity is really remarkable for a son of Brockton. Thank you for the great honor. I now live in Easton with my family and I've been paying very close attention to this chamber for many years, to this chamber and its success. And also to the success of all of the employers in this room. It's so important to the chamber, it's so important to the city and the region and to me personally. When I look at the number and diversity of businesses and the people employed locally, 
I am reminded of the important work that we all do at the chamber and the work we do over at Bridgewater State University to prepare people in this region and beyond for careers that are so essential in our economy, so essential for our economy to grow. And I just want to thank my colleagues at Bridgewater State University that are at that table over there. Thank you so much for joining us in that work. <clears throat> From my perspective as president of Bridgewater State University, while also serving on the Chamber's Board of Directors, I see the importance of the Metro South Chamber and its work. Convening, connecting, communicating, and advocating for business and pro-business policies is vital to this Chamber and to all of us who are a part of it. So I am pleased also that the Chamber had an opportunity at a recent retreat to establish some priorities for the new year. With these in mind, I will be fully engaged and accessible with the hope that I can depend on all of you to join us in making the new year a successful one for your business, for the chamber, and for our region. Together, we can achieve what none of us could ever achieve by ourselves. And now, I want to let you know about the gift bag. These are important roles and duties for the chamber chair. So. Um, we're going to have a little bit of networking, but you have the gift bags at, sh at your table. And I want to thank our friends that fill those gift bags, MBJ Wine Group, JM Pet Resort, Concord Foods, and so uh, Source 4. I want to thank them all for their contributions to the event. And as a reminder, one lucky person and only one lucky person at each table will take home a floral centerpiece. You can fight it out, go. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> Courtesy of Holmes McDuffie Flores, and the lucky winner is the person who is hosting the most people at Thanksgiving. So you're going to have to see who's hosting the most people at Thanksgiving <laughs> next week. All right. And if you, if you are, if you want, if you want to host more people, raise your hand, and my family will be over. Okay. You'll also notice a copy of Maria's book, Super Sparkle Everything. Do you see her book in the middle of the table, Super Sparkle? Super Sparkly Everything, Sparkly Everything. Whoever has the closest birthday to today is the lucky recipient of this book. You can go forward or backward. And, and Maria says she'll sign the books as well for you. Next, I want to remind you about the next Good Morning Metro South. It's on December 6th. It's at the Good Samaritan Medical Center. We'll hear from our host of Good Samaritan as well as our sponsor, Cambridge Savings Bank, and the new CEO of Easton's Children's Museum, Caitlin McGillicuddy. We hope to see you there. And now I want to thank a few people on behalf of the Chamber who helped make today's program possible. Please join me in thanking Crescent Credit Union and UMass Donahue Institute as premier sponsors. Thank you. Thank you. And our supporting sponsors, Old Colony Elder Services, Good Samaritan Medical Center, The Enterprise News, Wicked Local, JM Pet Resort, Maria Malagros, American Express Small Business Saturday, Fun Enterprises, Rich Morgan Photography, Brockton Cable um, Access, Community Access Channel, Crown Lennon, Cardinal Spellman High School, a cappella group who were amazing, Holmes McDuffie Flores, Source 4, Concord Foods, BC Tent and Awning, MBJ Wines, Brewster Ambulance, Brockton Area Transit Authority, Teen Challenge. I really want to thank Teen Challenge for opening up their facility, especially a special thanks to Dylan White and their very talented chef, Charles Herman. Thank you for hosting us here as well. <laughs> I too want to thank the remarkable chamber staff who's made all of this possible, Ann, Emma, Amanda, Kayla, David, Doris, and of course, Chris Cooney. Thank you, Chris, for your leadership. Thank you. <clears throat> so on behalf of the board, thank you all for attending. Thank you for your continued support of the chamber. This concludes the Metro South Chamber's 105th annual meeting. Please stick around for some networking and business to business expo, which will continue till 3 o'clock, and check out the activities in this room as well. Thank you so much.